Good morning. Grace and peace to all gathered for worship this morning on this second Sunday after the Epiphany. Um, welcome to all of you joining us on the live stream. For those of you that are here, visitors or contact information that has changed, there's a Connect card in front of you to fill out, drop on the offering plate. Anyone online that needs to update contact information or wants to reach out to us more personally, there is a link to Connect in the description of this event. I'm Pastor Sarah Cutter. With me is Pastor Todd Cutter. Leading our music off camera is Cantor Tom White, and we're delighted to have Mike Wright with us as our assisting minister. As we're able, we stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search, search us and, and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all that we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Called to baptize, we witness to grace and gather a people from each land and race. In deep flowing waters, we share in Christ's death. Then, rising to new life, give thanks with each breath. In Christ called to banquet, one table we share, a haven of welcome, a circle of care. Although we are many, we share in one bread, one cup of thanksgiving proclaims Christ our head. In Christ called to witness, by grace we will preach the life-giving gospel, God's love we will teach. By grace may our living give proof to our praise in costly compassion, reflecting Christ's ways. Unite us, anoint us, O Spirit of love, for you are within us, all round us above. Equip us for service, with gifts you bestow, in Christ is our calling, in Christ may we grow. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, 
and follow you more nearly day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and if there are children that would like to come up for children's time, you are welcome to. If you're in the same family unit, you can sit on the same blue X. Otherwise, please find a blue X and a mask. Good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing? Good, it's good to see you all. It's good to see you all. This is our box that we've had up here before and some of us might know what it is, but there might be some people joining us here today or people on the live stream that haven't seen it before. So we always have to say that this is, it's old and it looks like it's well taken care of. And sometimes things that are old and well taken care of have messages from God, so we'll see. Huh, I have a pair of scissors in there. You see my pair of scissors in there? And I have something that says what on it? Stop. Says stop. There are lots of things in our life that seem to say stop. I don't know if that ever happens to you guys if you're in school or you're at home and your teacher or your mom or your dad, your aunt or your uncle says, stop. There's a lot of times there's things in my head that I can't, I think I can't do that. And I say, stop, don't do that. You're not good enough. You can't do it. Just stop. And then I think I can't, I can't get through this, can I? I can't get through it. It's just like, I wonder if there's anything for you guys that comes to mind when you think stop. So I'm going to see if there's anything we can do to get through this stop sign. And while I'm doing this, see if we can get through this stop sign. I wonder what comes to your mind that you think, gosh, I just can't do that. And every time I try, I'm not good enough, or someone tells me no. But where is God calling us to go through where we would have ourselves stop and says, no, no, just like what we're going to hear in the gospel lesson today. Jesus doesn't say stop. Instead, he says, you are good enough. I've seen you. I know who you are. You can follow me and get through any stop sign. Can I get through here? I don't know. I should have done this, planned on this with my robe on. Oh, I did it. We got through the stop sign. Yay. All right, friends. Oh, shh, nobody saw that. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for helping us get through all of the ways that the world and our minds tell us to stop. And we thank you for the courage and grace to follow you. And all God's children said, amen. Thank you, friends. A reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God was not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, 
And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is spoken responsively. Lord, you have searched me out, O Lord. You have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. A reading from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and another. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, that you are not that is not your own. For you were brought, bought for a price, and therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. We are in the first chapter of John's Gospel. Jesus' earthly ministry has just begun, and he begins it um, by calling together his first followers. He's called his first two, and then today's um, Gospel text is the next two. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. 
And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Sometimes I am jealous of pastors that have a rich history of growing up on farms, which I swear every pastor I had growing up grew up on a farm. They, it's like they, they just never ran out of these great vignettes from their childhood that compared to parables about farmers sowing seeds or these great scripture stories that we have about vineyards. Then there's people who grew up as pastor's kids, like this fabulous guy I know pretty well. Folks like that, they have these, these stories about growing up in the shadow of the inner church that's just so rich and deep and meaningful. And then there's me. No one wants to hear stories about growing up with your family running a small business or being a young professional sitting around a conference room. It's so boring. Hustling for sales and spreadsheets and statistics. Who cares, right? But bloom where you're planted. That's my wheelhouse. It's not exciting, but maybe not everything we share in worship needs to be flashy. Maybe some things just need to be raw and exposed and down to earth, kind of like me. When I was a student in the engineering program at the University of Cincinnati, I was a co-op. That means I alternated between going to classes and working every other quarter. And during that time, I worked for the General Electric Company in their aircraft engine division. So not very exciting. As a student co-op, I did a lot of grunt work. We were the ones that ran the studies. We crunched numbers. We compiled data. It's not very flashy. These are also the elements that feed into the tests that the FAA requires and our customers needed to fly their planes. It's maybe getting a little bit more exciting. I, I don't know, you can tell me later. So I was one of the grunts that crunched the numbers, and I sat in a cubicle. One of my mentors would take me with him whenever he presented my data in meetings uh, because he wanted me to gain experience, and quite frankly, he was an excellent mentor. So usually I would go into these conference rooms and sit in the corner and be ignored, except for this one time where we were looking at an engine foul-up because that's what you do to grow. You don't look at engine successes. You look at mistakes and figure out what happened. So I'd compiled the data. The meeting got tense or at least as tense as things can get with introverted engineers when they debate one another. And my mentor looked at me and said, Sarah, you put these numbers together. What do you think? So I spoke up. I explained the numbers, and then I shut my mouth. This other guy who I didn't know, who was pretty far up the chain, was not pleased by any stretch of the imagination. And I remember him looking at me red in the face, nearly screaming, I don't even know who you are. Fewer moments stand out in my memory than the times when I feel hurt or belittled or brushed aside. And by far, this was one of those standout times. Maybe you have a similar experience in your life. I can fit into a crowd 99 times, but it's the one time out of 100 that I feel like I don't belong that stands out. Now, I wish that wasn't the case, but it is. I remember probably about five or six years ago, I ran across this book that had this drive-by comment that actually explained this phenomena of what we do. I found it fascinating, even if somewhat dissatisfying. Apparently, our brains have adapted to allow negative memories to actually take up more space than the positive ones. It helps us avoid similar feelings of betrayal or sadness or fear and anxiety 
So the negative experiences that we have actually take longer to process. They take more energy for us. They have more baggage, and they stick with us longer. And they also tend to have a lasting impression that causes us to focus on them. And if we play into that, and we spend our time and energy focusing on these negative experiences and protecting ourselves, it's super easy to miss the next best thing that's often right in front of us. And as we crawl forward in this pandemic and deal with our nation's uneasy transition of power, I cannot think of anything more we need to hear from our God right now than an encouragement to look up to be aware of what is in front of us, to allow the negative, to acknowledge, I should say, the negative, but to strive to not allow it to dominate our thoughts, our energy, and our time. Because heaven knows we could. And if we did, we would certainly sink like stones. And so to that end, I am grateful for the gospel lesson we just read. We're in John's gospel. Jesus is just beginning his earthly ministry. And this story documents for us just how compelling the earthly Jesus um, is. It's a reminder for us about why we show up here on Sundays, why we tune in to a live stream worship service, why we claim membership in this thing called church. Because Jesus shows up and he says to people, hey, follow me. Come and see. Watch and learn. And he is so utterly and completely compelling and life-changing that we do. And what we are given when we follow makes it possible to navigate the negative. In our gospel lesson, we aren't given much of a clue about who Philip and Nathaniel are, other than they followed Jesus. Tradition holds that all of those first followers of Jesus were fishermen. But Nathaniel isn't mentioned in other places in Scripture. In my mind, when I read this gospel text, I think Nathaniel is just my kind of people. And I, I don't know if you can figure that out, but, but he's my kind of people because he's, he's just a little bit snarky. Um, he's a little raw. He's a little exposed. He's really down to earth. Nathaniel is not flashy. He has a friend named Philip. Um, that's about all we know. Philip has been asked by Jesus to come and follow, and the first thing Philip does is go grab his buddy, Nathaniel. And he is so excited. I mean, when we read that scripture text, he, it almost jumps off the page. He goes, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. If that doesn't make sense, I can put it into modern terms for us. He says, everything the Old Testament said would happen is right here in front of us, and it's in this person. It's in this guy. Jesus, Joseph's kid, the one from Nazareth. Nathaniel, this is, how I, this is how I visualize this chapter in Scripture. Nathaniel, like, oh my golly. Seriously, Philip? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, have you been there? That one time I went, it was just an utter and complete dumpster fire. My brain is still processing that negative experience, and I'm still avoiding it. That's my own interpretation of the gospel, in case you're curious about where that came from. But Philip must have been convinced to go see it for himself. When Jesus shows up, he sees Nathaniel for who he is. And he looks at him, and he doesn't say, you know, you're just some screw-up from northern Galilee. He doesn't say, why are you being sarcastic with your friend? He doesn't tell him to get his life in order. He says, you, you are a solid person of faith. You follow scripture and you pray and you do what you can to live a godly, faithful life. You have the potential to follow me. And Nathaniel wonders how he knows this. And Jesus says, well, I saw you and that was enough. I mean, have you ever heard sweeter words than that? I saw you. I saw you and I knew who you were someone who is faithful, someone who is lovable, someone who has the potential to get behind a Savior and make a difference, well, I'll be darned. That description, that sounds an awful lot like you. 
Because I know that just as Jesus of Nazareth saw Nathanael for who he truly was, Jesus sees each and every one of us. He sees you and he sees me and he sees who we are, baptized children of God, people who are tired, people who are confused, people who may have lost sight of exactly who we are because of all of the negative swirling around us. Jesus sees us and looks past the the sarcasm and the snarky and the protective outer coating that we use to shield us from more negative memories and experiences. Jesus sees us as his own people, as his, as his followers, his church, scattered and virtual and socially distanced and exiled, but still moving forward, following him. Now, friends, I have no magic antidote for this little chapter of history that we are living through. But when I get anxious and experience negative emotions, one of the things I like to do is make jokes. It makes me feel better. So I really, reading this text all week, all I have wanted to say is, you know, can anything good come out of Washington, D.C.? But that just relieves my own anxiety. I do want us to know and to hold close that we are all seen. We are all seen. We are seen by our Lord and Savior who beckons us to follow. And I hope we can say that we are seen by each other. We are seen as people of faith. We are seen as sinners who make mistakes and saints who are redeemed by God's actions. It is easy to look down and to be brought down by the things put upon us, the things we can't control. And let me tell you, the best form of resistance that we have is compassion. Compassion that invites us to look up from our feet, to look around at the world around us, to look at each other, to care for one another, to care for the stranger, to care for those who are hurting. Saying things like, I I see that this is tough and that you are hurting and I wish I had a way to fix it, but right now I am just so glad that you had the courage to say something so that we can get through this mess together. Because I don't know what the week ahead holds for us, but I do know who holds us, and that is Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of scriptures, Joseph's kid from Nazareth, the best thing to ever come out of that town. Amen. Give them hearts for love alone, 
I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. By the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide. Till their hearts be satisfied, I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. We have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ our his only Son, Son, our Lord. He, he was, was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and born Lord. of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the Church the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, let us pray. Have mercy, o God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacemakers and military personnel, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable, let us pray. Have mercy, o God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially Pam, Ron, Hazel, Butch, Al, Joe, Pam, Doug, Kirsten, Michelle, and those we name in silence. That, that God console all who suffer. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from worship, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our nation, amid all the turmoil and changes of the world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In this time of danger and trouble, be to us a sure guardian and rock of defense. Guide newly elected leaders of our nation with your wisdom. Comfort those in distress and grant us courage and hope to face the future. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, especially Martin, that their lives give us vision of the gospel in action, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, 
for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. This portion in our service, we worship by sharing our tithes and offerings. We continue to not pass plates uh, to minimize risks, but there is a basket at the back where you can leave gifts, and there are links uh, if you're joining us via the live stream uh, on ways that you can give online. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful words, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. Come, Lord Jesus. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Come, Holy Spirit. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. If you're able, please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. 
Let, a, <clears throat> let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from the banquet nourished in body and spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As God sends us out into the world for mission and ministry, there are a few ministry opportunities to share with you. I would remind you that next Sunday, following this worship service and the 11 o'clock service, we have our annual meeting. At some point, you should receive in the mail a copy of our 2021 budget. If you have any questions about that, you are more than welcome to reach out to Pastor Sarah, to Council President Swan Seiler, to our Congregational Treasurer Susan Hewn. They'd be glad to answer any questions that you have in preparation for that meeting. Uh, we have opportunities to help those who are hungry over the next couple of weeks. For the past few years, our youth have participated in the Super Bowl of Caring, which was a uh, program started in Columbia, South Carolina, where food and money is typically collected on Super Bowl Sunday, which is the first Sunday in February. However, things are a bit different this year, so our youth group has challenged you. Uh, we want to see if the children and youth or the adults can collect more canned food and raise more money. Downstairs, as you leave in the lower narthex, there's a display. Uh, one side is for children and youth. One side is for adults. Uh, and so let's see what we can do over the next four weeks. All the canned food will be given to Second Harvest Food Bank. Any money raised will be split between uh, Second Harvest and uh, ELCA World Hunger. We have an opportunity to gather for worship this evening at 5 p.m. at Captain Butler's. Please remember to bring a chair. Um, you might want to also bring a blanket because it's supposed to be a bit cold. And I would also share with you that we continue to work on clarifying our vision. Thanks to those of you who answered the first of the two vision questions. The second one is now available. There's a link in your bulletin and information on how to fill that out. Um, and finally... Um, we're all aware of the tension that seems to be constantly present in our nation. I would invite all of you to take time to pray this week. Um, every day at noon, we can gather in prayer. Uh, we have some resources in our hymnal, actually, that provide excellent prayers. And I figure why rewrite what's already been well written. We'll post those to Facebook each day at noon as a guide for you. And now, as you are able, please stand for the blessing. Receive God's blessing. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. God is on our 
side. God is on our side. God is on our side today. Oh, deep in our hearts, we do believe God is on our side today. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for dismissal.